Hey guys, it's Nathan. In this video, we're going to be finishing up our swarm bot from last time. Remember, our initial plan for the swarm bot was that we're going to build a bunch of soldiers, we're going to send them all to the middle of the map until they form a big blob, and then at some point we said turn 600. They're all going to charge toward the enemy headquarters, destroying anything in their way and hopefully winning us the game. So, we need to write the code to control the soldiers. To do this, we have to deal with two problems. The first problem is that they're going to be a bunch of units all very close to each other, and we need to make sure they don't really run into each other and slow each other down. The second problem is that the soldiers need to coordinate so that they all attack at the same time, because if they don't, the attack will be much weaker. It turns out that the first problem actually isn't that big of a deal, but to solve the second problem, we need to use the messaging system to coordinate between robots. So, the messaging system for Battlecode this year works like this. Each team has a private global message board that they can write to. Any robot can write to a channel, and any robot can read from a channel. So, if robot A wants to send a message to robot B, robot A can write to, say, channel 0, and then robot B can read from channel 0. And that way, robot A can write an integer to robot B. We do this using the broadcast methods to write a message to a certain channel, and the read broadcast method to retrieve the message stored at that channel. The way that we are going to write this bot is we're going to write a map location represented by an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate into the global message board. This map location will serve as a rally point, and all soldiers will read this rally point and try and move to it. This way, all the soldiers will congregate in one place. For the first 600 turns, the rally point will be set to the middle of the map, and after that, the rally point will be set to the enemy headquarters. It's easiest if the headquarters coordinates all of this. So, let's let the headquarters set the rally point for now. You're welcome to experiment with other units taking this role later, but it's very simple if everything is centralized. So let's get started writing the code. So if the turn is less than 600, we want to set the rally point to be the middle of the map. Otherwise, we want to set the rally point to be their HQ. So the middle of the map will be the average of your HQ's position and their HQ's position. Oh, I forgot the over twos. So the rally point will be set to the middle of the map in this case. And if the turn is greater than 600, we can just set the rally point to be the position of their HQ. So that almost takes care of the headquarters code. It's very clean and simple, but we need to figure out how to tell what turn we're on. It turns out that this is done via the clock class. So if you look at the clock class, we can get the number of byte codes that our robot has, as well as the round number. So we can type in clock got get round num here. And if it's less than 600, then we do this part, otherwise we do this part. Great. So that takes care of the headquarters code. Now let's program the soldiers to do what we want. First of all, we want the soldiers to attack anything in range. Remember that Alex has written us two methods that help with attacking. First of all, get enemies in attacking range returns a list of the enemies in this robot's attacking range. <laughs> and attack least health enemy, when given a list of enemies, chooses the one with the least health and handles all of the attack code in here. So, first, we'll make a call to get enemies in attacking range. 
And if there are any enemies, Oh, we also need to check if the, the robot's actually allowed to attack. Or in other words, if its weapon delay is low enough. So if there are any enemies nearby, we'll attack. Otherwise, we want the robot to move. So let's get the rally point from the messaging board. We do this by typing rc.readbroadcast zero to get the X location. And rc.readbroadcast one to get the Y location. So the map location that we want will be just a map location rally X comma rally Y. So as before, we'll use Alex's method get moved her to figure out the direction that we want to go in to get to rally point. So if there's a direction that we can move in that will take us closer to the rally point, we'll move that way. And if there are any enemies in range, we'll attack. This should finish up our bot. Let's test it to make sure that it works the way we want it to. Let's test it on a simpler map, like lanes. Oh, there are a lot of exceptions. You cannot move in the direction none or omni or null. At beaver Oh, I see. I forgot to do the null check in the beaver code as well. So the soldiers are not rallying to the right point. Let's take a look at our code and see what's going wrong. Oh, I see. We forgot to write the broadcast. This way, the soldiers had no idea where to go. Let's test that again. Now the soldiers should go to the right place, which is the center of the map. There we go. So now at turn 600, the soldiers should burst forth and hopefully destroy everything that the enemy has. You can see the round number up here. Let's wait until turn 600. So the robots tried their best, but they were defeated. One reason for this is that we have a lot of beavers, way more beavers than we need. So we could build more soldiers if we stopped building beavers after a while. Let's say after 10 beavers, we don't build any more because 10 is probably as many as we need. So how do we tell the HQ to stop building beavers? We can do this again by using the messaging system. 
So let's use channel 2. First of all, we'll get the number of beavers by reading channel 2. All channels in the global messaging board start with a value 0. So the first time we read num beavers, it will be the value that we want. Then every time we spawn a beaver, we'll write the value of num beavers plus 1 back to the second channel. Finally, when we try and spawn a beaver, we check that num beavers is less than 10. This way, we won't build too many beavers, and we can focus our efforts on building soldiers. Let's run this again and make sure it works the way we want it to. Let's skip a little forward. You can see that there are much fewer beavers on the board, and there are a lot more soldiers. So, hopefully, at round 600, Actually, some of the soldiers are going into the range of towers, which is bad. But the soldiers burst forth. They're still not able to kill the towers, but that was a lot better. Anyway, hopefully this gets you guys started building your own bots. You can play around with the constants that I've littered throughout my code here. And hopefully you can beat the example player and do a little better than I did. But the basic idea behind a swarm bot is still here. It masses a bunch of units and then it moves all those units around as a single unit to provide strength in numbers. Anyway, hope this was, hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys next time.